Hey guys, this is Sega with Frontline Tactic, and I'm uh, going to be showing a little bit of Kenshi um, while I talk about some of the E3 event that has been going on. I'm going to need to uh, import squad without buildings. See how this goes. So, one of the things I want to talk about is like the Microsoft presentation. It was pretty cool, but at the same time, it was. It was exactly what I thought it was going to turn into. Um, it, it basically turned into kind of a quasi-pissing contest between Microsoft and Sony. I know it's kind of the general uh, consensus is that... Um, where, where did my camera load and where's my team? There we go. Uh, the general consensus is that... Um, Sony made some very, or Microsoft that is, made some very poor choices, and that uh, Sony kind of came out on the lead on this, and I have to kind of agree about with that, uh, on the sheer basis that with all the DRM and other BS that's going on. But one of the games that, I mean, the, the Xbox One, uh, it, what it said, it came out at 4 dollars and right off the bat, Sony said $3.99. Uh, probably two major games to note for the Xbox One was that they really showed off that people seemed in, enthralled by was Halo 5, which I was not a big fan of Halo 4. I mean, I rented that one for like two bucks out of Redbox. Uh, brother and I busted out in like two or three days. Uh, was not impressed. The story didn't make any damn sense. And it looks like they're going to be continuing on this, um, the third game, or sorry, the fifth game, or second game by, uh, 545, yeah, is it 545 Studios? Yeah, it's the second game by 545 Studios. So, it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, the directions that they want to take this, but I was not impressed with Halo 4, so Halo 5, I'm not really going to be that enthralled or impressed with, most likely. Uh, but Titanfall, Titanfall, oh my gosh, that game looks ridiculously awesome. I know I, I shouldn't be getting all hopped up and uh, excited. Oh, excuse me, excited for a game that's not even, uh, I mean, I mean, it's not even out yet. But I did find it kind of misleading that Microsoft went and said that it was uh, uh, an exclusive for Xbox. But then, when I saw a little bit farther, some more presentation by the publisher, or not the publisher, but by the, um, you know, yeah, you guys know what I meant, by the producer, uh, they went and said that it's going to be initially out on Xbox One, but it's also coming out on Xbox 360 and PC. And I'm not going to go into all the different DRMs that, uh, the, that, uh, Microsoft went and said that's going in. I'm not going to go into that. I mean, there's enough places already that has gone into enough of the kind of pissing contest of what's going on. There's no reason for me to add into it. There, there's, there is, isn't. Oh, but I'm double checking the hats. Actually, oh, never mind. That is better. I will give you back your bandana now. So, I gather up my team. Yeah, so sorry about this, guys. This is going to be kind of a mixture of me rambling and kind of finding a place to build. I found kind of a neat little thing to do. Let's send my guys off to run that way. They'll get there. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to go into all the, the DRMs and stuff like that, but Microsoft initially said that the price is going to be $4.99. And for $4.99, I mean, right now you can build a great computer. And so my goal is actually I'm going to maybe build, want to build a computer that's going to be able to run Titanfall. I'm just, I may not even deal with 
the Xbox One. But granted, this, this is not even out yet. So they could back out with all this DM BS that's going on and hopefully be able to save themselves. But we'll have to see. But Sony, I mean, yeah, the, they announced a few games, almost no DRM. The, um... The, the little video that they did to show, like, what you could and could not do, uh, or, sorry, was the, the trading. Like, that was a gigantic slap in the face to Microsoft, where they're like, with the two CEO guys just, like, handed off a copy of a game. And they're like, see, this is how you, uh, this is how you trade games. Just ridiculous, like, did not expect them to do that. See if I can loot this guy real quick. Ooh, chain shirt. Oh, no. Yeah, sure, why not? Take the extra hat, take the med kit. Uh, does he have red pants? No, he doesn't. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna just basically strip this guy. And then take his backpack. There we go. Then we're going to attack the sand engine. Alright. But, you know, I, I did guess. I did make my predictions. I was right about Killzone, Metal Gear Solid, a new Infamous, which the Infamous they've been advertising for some time. Warframe, that was interesting. I know I did a little bit of coverage on my channel that Warframe's going to be transferred over to... Uh, Sony, and I think eventually, uh, I did not hear them talk about any other platforms. It sounds like they're just going to keep it to PC and to, uh, PS4 and Dust 514 for EVE online conjunction, which that looks pretty awesome. I don't know if you guys have even seen any of that. Which is kind of a neat mechanic that you're going to be able to combine. Let's loot the trade shirt. There we go. So that seems really interesting. If I had more time, um, I would maybe get into Dust 514. It kind of interests me. I have a buddy that was pretty fanatical about Eve. So I would I would maybe try to get into it with him, but I just don't have the time or the ability to do it. But from what I understand, Dust 514 and Warframe are both going to be free-to-play games, and one of the things that they wanted to basically go and say about um, the free-to-play games, because I know a lot of people got up in an uproar about uh, the the whole, like, the no DRM, DRM for Sony, but there's going to be an online sub. Like, there's a lot of people getting upset about that. It's like, listen, guys, for everyone that's been okay with, say, pay-as-you-go, um, actually, let's, we want to go completely the other direction. Um, pay-as-you-go, um, or, or monthly subscription MMOs, as well as anyone that's had Xbox Live, You've had to pay for that stuff anyways, and I completely understand. And everyone that's pissing and moaning about this are a bunch of babies. The The fee covers servers. And I understand that majority of the average player, it's not going to cost them that much. You know, you know was it comes out to $5 a month or something like this. It's like 50 60 bucks a year to, to provide this service. I understand that that is overcharging. But I did like what some I heard overheard someone in their commentary about the whole thing talk about how it's possibly going to cover up the lost costs of used games and things like that. Am I going the right direction? I don't even know if I'm going in the right direction anymore. Um. All 
Actually, no, I don't think I'm going in the right direction. I think I'm supposed to go this way. Ugh, I don't even know. And so it covers it helps cover the cost. What else has been kind of like in the news and on my mind? Oh, yeah, yeah, so while we're talking about the, the, the cost of Sony's uh, online fee, it's, um, they did state that games like, well, I was talking about Warframe and Dust 514, any free-to-play games that they have, those are going to be covered by the publisher of that game, we believe. Like, that's the, uh, that's that's how I believe is it's going to be on is the cost of the server. So Sony's not going to mitigate that cost. And so you can go not have to pay for their online service and still play Warframe and various other pretty cool titles out there so that's not going to be an issue um, I have seen a lot of like reviewer harassment lately just because like someone's had a specific view and this is coming a lot from what I've read about like going on with The Last of Us there's a lot of people raging about like some 8 you know GameSpot gave them an 8 out of 10 and people are like just foaming at the mouth for no damn reason and it's like you gotta look at the perspective of uh, of the person that's reviewing the game. So like me, I like a lot of RPGs. I kind of like first-person shooters, but I'm not huge into first-person shooters. But then say, look at someone that's huge into first-person shooters and doesn't like RPGs, or you know, then you got your Call of Duty brats who just love fast-paced first-person shooter and story is for the sissies. Um, so each one of those people that can review the same game and give different outlooks. Now, the game is the same, and but the perceptions of the individual is going to change the rating of how they want to specifically rate the game. Because someone that does not like story-driven content possibly will hate the game The Last of Us or various other games because there's too much story or not enough focus on action. Or people that love stealthers are going to find certain games too, you know... Um, either too fast or too slow and so it's you have to take that in with a grain of salt of who is the person reviewing the game as well as like let's let's stop and think about why is it good to have different reviewers because if everyone reviewed the games at the same score then it's just mediocrity it's no one has a different point of view and so what's the point of having all these websites to talk about if everything gives the same comment, it's at that point we become all the same person. We think the same, and that's it. Then we're good. If that's the case, if everyone's going to review the same, that means there's going to be no one from with a different point of view. We're going to have stagnation, no innovation, no yearn to try to do better. Because I'm sure it's these other game publishers they read these games, retire, you know, reviews on a certain bracket. Granted, some of them are probably pay, which I understand that. That's that's just the industry and market. But it it would be interesting to see, or not interesting to see, but it would, it's it would be great to see everyone stay different and have their own different points of views. Because if we get too stagnant with each other, it, we will s struggle and fall. Oh, looks like I'm getting followed here. So let's take my best fighters here and go and head them off. But yeah, that's it's just sad seeing people just internet rage over stupid stuff. Well, my guys really ran out far. Let's see what else. I'm just hoping I can find some flat ground. Ugh, poor, poor Eric. Keep running, Eric. <laughs> but yeah, there's some interesting stuff to see for the PC, and there's a few games that I'm really hoping to get into. Um, one of them, funny enough, was called Dying Light, which I believe is going to be on consoles, not on PC. Uh, one of th I love games that kind of show great cinematics and stuff, but at a great cinematic trailer is great and all guys but you didn't show me in any shape or form any other types of video like gameplay or anything it just you shot you showed me nothing that's if we want you know if we want to get down to it you showed me nothing uh, you showed me a beautiful game 
you know, trailer and uh, video, or not so much video, but the potential of what's going to be happening. Like, we saw the weapon change over time. We saw... Ah, oh, damn, I am getting my ass stomped by this crew. Let's see if my fighters can mop them up. Actually, let's pull everyone to this location. Looks like we're going to be healing up here. Um, because it showed a little bit of crafting. It showed, you know, the guy electrified a hammer, or that, that giant monkey wrench, right, and, you know, so it showed some progression, as well as it showed that there was a need for supplies. I have not been able to read much more about the game, so I don't really know what's all going on. But it seemed very interesting. Uh, another one I saw was Tom Clancy's The Division. Uh, I love Tom Clancy games. I think Tom Clancy games are amazing. Um, oh my gosh, drop that fool. Let's see if we can get the first aid there. Uh, and the the level of detail and graphics in the game was just ridiculous. Now I don't know if that's actual gameplay or if that's just what they cooked up for E3. It's it's something that we've seen before where people cook stuff up for E3 and it's not actual. What's the gameplay? But hopefully it's something that awesome. And even if it is that awesome, that looks like it's going to be very graphic intensive for your PC. And so it's going to be interesting what kind of rigs that we're going to be able to buy and make with these consoles that are going to be coming out for $4.99 and $3.99. Where are you guys running off to? Nope. Everyone stay. I want everyone here. Um, and so it'd be interesting to see the direction that things are going to go. Um, it would be nice to see that once these games do come out that the the cost of making a, a rig a new comp PC computer will drop and if that's the case then hopefully for you know for the comparable price of the console you'll be able to make a decent powered machine again and then another one was Dragon's Profit which I got into the pre -al the alpha for it um, I know I tried to show that it, that info off to you guys, um, but I was not able to because I don't have Windows 7. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Uh, Dragon's Prophet is, uh, a, you have to have a Windows 7. There's a specific DLL file that is only found in Windows 7 or Windows 8. And so, yeah, I, I was not able to bring you Dragon's Prophet. I've thought about loading it up and seeing if it's changed, but I don't know. I got bushwhacked by this group. Let's see if we can pick him up. There we go. that guy down but yeah it's maybe I'll, I've thought about loading that game back up and seeing about trying to uh, play it again um, see if I can get any uh, you know any content out of it or, or viewability out of it There's really no flat land around here. This is a terrible place. I should have did research on where the best place is to to build. Um, let's check the map. Don't want to try like 
Sorry about that. I want to I want to go check out what that circle is. Like what what is that circle? Um so yeah, this is kind of like me exploring Kenshi and rambling about E3 content. But like I said, it's going to be real interesting to see how things go. Um especially with some of Microsoft's DRM. Um they may change it. Like they may be able to, like I I have this slim hope that it's it's going they're going to uh backtrack on something with DRM because this is it's bloody terrible. I mean, it's just absolutely wretched. Um, plus, with some of their comments about just alienating people that um, that work in mining con, you know, let's say work in reclusive mining colonies, uh, oil rigs, nuclear subs was the main was the main uh, comment, uh, as well as say uh, military. Like, oh my gosh, you like you essentially alienated military. Way to go, Microsoft. The hell is wrong with you? Uh, I, I mean, I got in this argument with a few people I know, and it's like, why are you so passionate about this always on DRM? Like, why are you against it so much? You always have internet. You've had internet, like, for the, almost the past 15 years of your life, like, as a constant. And it's like, yeah, I understand that, but I... I understand there's there's people out there that can't afford internet. There's people out there that in between, you know, they save up 5 to $10 a month so that every six months they can maybe buy a new video game. And that they, they, they are able to do that by, you know, scrimping and saving and being thrifty. And part of that is is not paying 60 plus dollars a month for internet connection. And let alone there's people that don't even have, they're not in the part of the world or easily enough have the access to this uh, to decent internets to be able to do those check-ins another thing that I found that was really interesting was I was listening to Total Biscuit Total Biscuit was talking about uh, I'm trying to figure out who picked him up ah there we go Let me highlight everyone again. Um, Total Biscuit stated that, tw uh, and that's where I got the the info from, was that there was going to be 21 countries that are are part of the region lock for Xbox. 21 countries, and apparently he was stating that half of the of the European Union is going to get locked out, and uh, as well as you know, uh, I was looking into getting into The Witcher 3, which was another uh, Xbox One launch. But that one, Poland is where the the publisher is from, or the uh, the. They're not even going to be able to play their game when the game launches. How ridiculous is that? That is, yeah, and The Witcher has done so so much great work and and brought so many people to the consoles and. I mean, it, it's kind of like the more obscure Skyrim. But yeah, a lot of bad choices have been made and I think a lot of good choices have been made well because on that note Sony has stated that they they don't have any region locks so it's just gonna be very interesting to see how truthful some of the stuff and how much some of the stuff is gonna get backpedaled granted I mean I know I have not spoken too much ill about Sony but Sony on this line can also easily backpedal and decide to make some choices similar to uh, Is not going well. Uh, similar choices as uh, Microsoft. So it'd be interesting to see how things go. Oh my gosh, I'm in a giant fight with Sand Ninjas. So hopefully my guys can stay alive. You start. Looks like we're gonna drop one of them pretty soon. Let's see what else. I don't know what else I want to say. I think I was just, for the most part, I got my rambling done. <laughs> and watch.
watch my guys fight here. Getting some good hits in. Good katana. How do these guys start healing themselves? Let's see. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it I really want to talk about. Um, what other future stuff I got going on? I got um, uh, the patch for... Uh, well, Balls. I was having him heal him. And he passed out due to blood loss. Awesome. Leaf, get over here. Oh, Leaf doesn't have any bandages. Okay. Alright, need you on him. Oh my gosh. You guys are tore up. Old soldier did fine. <laughs> He's like, I'm fine, see? Uh, and Kendallin just blacked out. Okay. Old soldier, you go heal Kendallin. <laughs> Oh, Leaf just blacked out. Okay. You go heal him. What sword is that? Eh. Also, we give me a pretty nice price. Straight edge katana. What we got going over here? Oh yeah, I got my shit rocked. So, um, as I ramble off there until I lost focus, um, uh, but yeah, so I'm still waiting for the update for Kenshi. I love this game. I think it's awesome. Um, I'm just gonna show you this trick. So apparently, let me quick save it real quick. There we go. So because I had it crash before, but if you do Shift F12, you can pull up this huge list and like be able to build anything. Yeah, get rid of that just because it's um, yeah, kind of tedious. But yeah, uh, this is absolutely terrible. So, Gen Z, you're going to pick up him. And you're going to pick up that go. There we go. Oh, gosh. Nice oh, town out there. But yeah, so I'm waiting for the next patch. I've already talked about it in one of my previous videos about all the things that they're doing. Um, as well as I'm looking forward to the patch for Terraria is coming out soon. That's going to be awesome. Um... 
Uh, they announced Blood Bowl 2. I'm hoping that's going to be awesome. That's hopefully fix some of the bugs and things like that that they had. Who knows? We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, I feel like this was mostly me just rambling and didn't know really what to do. Um, I had today off from work and I just felt bored. So, yeah, yeah, I'm just kind of like that. So I think I'm going to pretty much end it. Um, uh, comment, rate, tell me how you like this. Um, if you thought that I just ramble about stupid crap all the time, then hey, let me know. And I will continue to work hard to fine-tune um, the my, my direction of speech. I know sometimes I get a little just rambly and talk in circles sometimes. Um, one of the things I started doing is writing down a script. And that's kind of helping me a little bit, but sometimes when I'm trying to focus on the screen and the controls, it I get sidetracked. Um, but yes, uh, another, so send me an email, you know, um, say get the destroyer at gmail, or just message me via YouTube, as well as you can send me a message at my Twitter, which is at Busted Helix. I will have the con uh, information down in the bottom. Um, but yes, let me know what you thought. Comment. Uh, if you think that any of my ranting on the E3 thing is wrong, I want to hear your opinion. Because that's, you know, I, I can't state, you know, go and uh, argue about the reviewer harassment and about how great it is to have different points of views and then not be willing to listen to yours. So, please, let me know. So, remember, message me at at Busted Helix uh, via Twitter or message me here on YouTube or leave a comment. All will do good. I'll save it here as my team tries to catch their breath. And, uh, yeah. Have a good night, folks. Bye.